Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp. Today, we're going to talk about edge and face styles. So we already did a, a whole nother Square One video on the style window. Remember, it's over in the tab bar or the bar on the side, and you can go in there and set up different styles and save them. This is actually a way to quickly and easily toggle your edge style or your face style on the screen. And we're going to talk about how to do that right now. Okay, so I created a quick model here. I have this kind of 3D ground plane, a little bit of depth to it. And then I created three shapes and then I got Sumele over here. A couple of my shapes have just solid colors. And this one in the front has some yellow brick material on it. Um, one of the default materials. And we're gonna use this to kind of jump through and see how to edit edges and styles. Right now, it is the default from the standard template. So this is when you first start a model with the architectural template. In SketchUp Pro, this is what you get. So what's actually happening here is my edges are visible. I can see my lines. Um, profiles are turned on because you see the outside line of everything is a little bit heavier, maybe twice as heavy as the standard lines. Um, and then I'm showing all of my materials. So everything is showing up. Um, or just how it should. Perfect. This is good. This is the default. But let's go look and see how we could toggle this stuff. So I'm going to use uh, the View menu. Under View, we're going to come down to, this is the same on Windows or Mac. Go down, there's Edge Style and Face Style. Let's talk about both these. We'll start with Edge Style. So Edge Style is broken into two sections. One is Edges, and two is all the other stuff that I can do with Edges. So let's talk these about, about these first two first. So here's edges. If I turn edges off, you see my main lines go away. It is kind of a cool look. This is kind of neat because all the inside lines disappear, but I still have that profile around the outside, which is a separate value. It's a separate uh, check mark to turn the profile on and off. So right now, this is edges off, profile on. I'm going to come back up to view edge style. I'm going to go ahead and turn edges back on. I'm also going to come in here to edge style and turn back edges on just to show you what this looks like. Back edges is a pseudo x-ray. This isn't actually x-ray. I can't see all the way through everything perfectly, but what it's showing me is dotted lines where the back edges are. The edges that are hidden by other faces are in the model. This is a nice quick reference if you're concerned with where that back geometry is or that you have back geometry, that kind of thing. It's a reminder. Some people like this view because it is, you know, depending on the type of view they're doing, uh, it's nice for certain output, where maybe you're doing a mechanical drawing or something like that, it might be necessary to show those back edges, and that's how you turn it on real quickly. I'm gonna go in for our example and go to edges and turn back edges off. Okay, so now we're back to just standard edges and profiles. If we wanna get rid of the profile, we can go to edge style and turn off profiles. By the way, I am clicking and holding down when I click view and then going to the edge style, still holding down and then going to the command I want to toggle and just releasing. So let's take a look at depth cue. So it's a single click to do it. I just have to hold it down a little bit. The way depth cue works is as you spin the model around, it's calculating what line is closest to you, the camera. So right here, this edge is the thickest, so I get some nice thick lines. Sumele is pretty close to me, and this uh, extruded hexagon is close, so they get thicker lines. As I go further back, the cube, and then finally the cylinder, and then the back of the plane get thin lines, so they thin back down. So that's how depth cue works. Closest line to you is the thickest, furthest line from you is the thinnest. If I go back into edge style, I'll go ahead and turn depth cue off. This is what it would look like with no profile. This is just standard lines. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to edge style. I'm gonna turn profiles back on. And I'm gonna go into edge style and I'm turn extensions on. So what extensions does is it just gives you a little bit of a little teeny tiny extension at the end of each line. You can see that, see the little X there? These little teeny X's. This can be edited, of course. This is just based on a preset. If I do go into my styles menu, this is part of the uh, default tab bar on Windows. It's one of the floating windows on Mac. You can go to extension right here. It's only three pixels right now, and I could set that bigger, so it's set up to like eight. 
and then you can see a little more clearly what that is. See the lines where they meet, they just get extended a little bit longer. So kind of a neat view. This, this pairs well with some hand-drawn styles, that kind of thing, where you can just have those lines turned off or, or turned on. Um, a lot of times for input though, for like for me, that's a bunch of extra lines that I don't necessarily need to see. It's, it doesn't necessarily help me to see those. I can't interact with them. I can't snap to them or anything like that. Um, but they're just kind of there for my reference. Uh, if, you're, if you're used to a program that uses something like endpoints, sometimes that can be helpful because it's where that X is is basically where a snap point is. Um, I'm going to go back into edge style and turn extension off. So now we're back to just standard edges and profiles like we had in the beginning. Now let's talk about face styles. If I go to view, hover over face styles, I have here up by itself is x-ray. These options down here are going to change how your, how your faces are represented on the screen. X-ray can be used in conjunction with any of these other types. So X-ray can be turned on or off regardless of what you have selected below. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on just to see it. Okay, this is true X-ray. Remember before we saw back edges, this actually shows us the, uh, turns all of our materials translucent and I can see through them and I can see the back sides. Um, this is, this is everything in X-ray. This is X-ray with face style shaded with textures. I'm going to go ahead and turn X-ray off now. Just remember that, that that X-ray can be toggled on for any face style. The first one wouldn't make much sense. Wireframe is literally just that. These are just my edges. This still, still follows the edge rules. So it's still showing my edges with, uh, the profile. We see at this point, Basically, all faces are turned off. So if I come in here, I can't even select faces because they're not really there. If I go to face style and let's go to the next one, hidden line. Okay, now this becomes a little more useful as far as interacting with faces. This is basically my wireframe, but with my faces put in the same color as the ground. So you can see everything in there is the same color. It's literally one color, just my lines and faces, that's it. Nothing else to get in the way. So if you're really looking for your pure, simple way to model, this is kind of nice. This also doesn't have, you see that the, you know when you move around and the, the color changes based on how the light's hitting the surfaces, all of that's gone. It is literally just one color and lines. If I go to face style again, let's check out shaded. Okay, so shaded is pretty close to what we have before. This is gonna get the, the color change as we move around. But one of the things you'll see is missing, this block turned to kind of a, a yellow, muddy yellow color instead of the texture that was there before. The big difference between shaded with textures and just shaded is that any surface that is colored with a texture will get kind of this, this summary color representing the shaded, the texture itself put on there. So it cuts down uh, on the heaviness of the model that's being displayed because it doesn't have to show all the pictures, which is what materials are, the pictures of those textures on each of the faces. If I go to view, face style, jump back up to shade with textures, this is where we started off. This was the first one we looked at. This is the default for many of the styles, and this is what most people are used to working in SketchUp in. There's one more face style, and we're gonna go take a look at it. If I go to face style and choose monochrome, what monochrome does is it shows me everything one, one color, one of two colors. Every face that's inside of SketchUp has a front and a back. In this case, all front faces that are facing outward are, are shown in white. Back faces are shown in gray. So in this case, my cylinder is actually modeled inside out. And I know that because looking at monochrome, it should be white. You can paint back faces just like you can paint front faces. So when I look at this in shaded textures, everything looks great. But depending on how, what I'm using this model for, if I'm exporting this as a file to get 3D printed or out to a CNC, something like that, um, or if I'm going to take this and try to render it, I might have problems with the fact that that cylinder is inside out. 
something like an STL export, this geometry may just disappear from the file altogether. In a render, I might see these two objects and this one might show up as like a big black space or not be there at all. So front and back faces are important and I know it's hard to keep track of front and back faces as you're modeling and sometimes you put colors on and you lose them and that's why it's such a nice option to have to go to view, face style, turn on monochrome and you can see where your issues are and where you might want to go in and fix them. Whew. So I know, that was a lot of things to absorb in a very short amount of time, but they're all there and you can play with them anytime you want. Changing edges, changing faces, it's not going to change your model. It just is changing how it's shown on the screen. So you can always go in and change those, play, flip through them, and see how it affects your model, see how it, maybe there's a specific face style that you find you work in better, or maybe there's something you do with your edges to make it more clear for you as you're looking at your screen. Um, it's not going to change your model. So it's very easy to go in and play with those. A lot of people freak out because they get back edges turned on and they don't know how to get rid of it. Um, you can always go and just turn those on and off going under view and then edge styles or face styles. So check that out. And if you like this video, do click like down below. And if you don't already, you should subscribe to our channel. We create several videos a week and be notified of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, Leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Do you use any of these commands? Are these commands new to you? How do you think you would use them in your workflow? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.